all right hello everyone so in this video we're going to look at uh, the sum of first n terms of a gp once you have a sequence like we saw in arithmetic progression you the next thing is to consider how to sum to get a series Re recall that the sum of the terms of a sequence is what gives you a series so if i have one two three four and so on as a sequence so the series of this sequence is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot 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 so this is a sequence why this is the series of this sequence okay so now to find a series for a given n terms of a gp now we say that if a is our first term r is a common ratio then the sum of a gp is given by this formula and in another video, I'm also going to show how this formula was gotten. And we said that this formula holds if um, our R is less than 1. Okay, so of course, for the two formulas, R must not be 1. If R is 1, then the, the, the equation is undefined. Okay, so the, since it's a fraction, the denominator must not be 0. Right, so now here, why should this be less than 1? so that you are not going to get a negative value because the sum must not be negative so because once your n is your r is less than one no matter what the n is if you raise any number less than one as n goes to infinity this particular power goes to zero all right so that means if you subtract it from one it will still remain positive okay so um and then in this case if you're now having your r to be greater than one then the formula turns this way r comes first before one okay so we're going to see examples the first one here says find the sum of the first six terms of the gp and this is the gp here so from this gp <clears throat> we have our a as 16 and we have our r as um, 8 over 16 okay, we take the, the a term and divide by the previous and that will give us 1 over 2. And then uh, the n is 6. Okay, so our formula says that Sn is equal to a into 1 minus um, r raised power n all over 1 minus r. Since our r is less than 1, so we'll make use of this. So we have equal to 16, which is a into 1 minus 1 over 2 r raised to the power of 6, which is our n all over one minus half so we we'll have that uh, our s6 now is equal to um okay if we raise this to the power of six we are going to have one minus one all over 64 and that is over half one minus half is half okay and so from there we are going to have that our s6 is equal to if this turns upside down since it's a division changes to multiplication here so it will become 2 over 1 that means we take away this okay so when 2 now multiplies 16 we'll have 32 and that'll be 32 into 1 minus 60 1 over 64 will give us uh, 63 all over 64 and when 32 divides this you are going to have 2 left below and that will give us 63, 63 over 2, which you can change into an improper fraction. And if you do that, you have that our S6 is equal to 31, 1 all over 2. And that's the solution. Okay, so we'll check the second example. Okay, so example 2 says uh, that we are given a series and... Is an infinite series so it says what is the sum of the first n terms and when you're asked a question of this form what the person is indirectly asking is that you should generate a formula for the first n terms that generates uh, an expression that will represent the first n terms okay so and what do we do here so we begin a now the general formula for sum of first n terms is Sn equal to a into 1 minus r raised to the power n all over 1 minus r. This is when your r is less than 1. And of course, if we check here, 
1 over 3 divided by 1 is 1 over 3, which is less than 1. So this holds, right? So we'll try to substitute. What is our first term? 1 uh, minus our r. I just got our r as 1 over 3. So you have 1 over 3 raised to the power of n. Raised to the power of n all over 1 minus 1 over 3. Why am I leaving it as power n? Because there is no value for n for the question 1. They are just asking you for the general n, sum of, of n terms. How is it going to look like? So you just leave it as n. And then uh, this is going to give us that, uh, of course, this one will go. So we just have 1 minus. Of course, you know that 1 raised to the power of anything is going to be 1 all over 3 raised to the power of n will be 3 power n over whereas 1 minus uh, 1 over 3 will give you 2 all over 3. We are going to have that our sn is actually equal to, of course, like we said, this is going to turn over to 2 over 3 and then it is multiplying 1 minus 1 all over 3 raised to the power of n and this is the solution for your n terms the sum of n terms that is to say that any n that you bring just put it here and then expand it and you will get your solution and uh, of course we are going to check that with uh, the question b question b says we should find the sum of first four terms meaning our n here is four so our s4 by this formula is going to be 3 all over 2 into 1 minus 1 all over 3 raised to the power of 4. And then you will try to explain this, uh, sorry to simplify, which will give us 3 all over 2. And this is 1 minus 1 all over 3 raised to the power of 4 is 81. And so we have that this is equal to 3 all over 2 times 1 minus this is going to give us 80 all over 81. So please check that and confirm. And when you do your cancellation, where possible, 2 will go here, uh, 2 here is 40, 3 will go here, 3 here is 27. And therefore, your S4 is 40 all over 27. And you can reduce this into a mixed number. Right, and that's the solution for the second problem. Okay, so let's try to see a third example. All right, so this example here says that we should find the common ratio and the product of X and Y if what we have here is uh, the sequence we have here is in a geometric progression. This is a repetition. Okay, so what do we do with that now you are going we are going to make use of the knowledge of the definition of the common ratio and when we started i defined the common ratio by saying that uh, it is a ratio you get by dividing a particular term by the previous okay so that means that if i say x all over 16 over 9 that this should be equal to, remember we said that it is constant, it should be equal to 1 all over x. So why am I taking that? So that I will be able to find the value of x. And when I find the value of x, if I substitute it into any of these two, I will get the common ratio. Because this division is the common ratio, this is also common ratio. y over 1 is also common ratio. Okay, so in that case, that means from here, if I cross multiply, I am going to have that uh, x squared is equal to 16 all over 9. And we are done. Take the square root of both sides. And so you have that x is equal to 4 all over 3. Okay. Now, but this is the value of x. So, but we said that this ratio, 1 divided by x, is the common ratio. Therefore, our common ratio is equal to 1 all over 4 over 3, which is the reciprocal and that is uh, 3 all over 4 okay and uh, that gives us the first part of the question which we can call a and then the second part says that we should find the product of x and y 
in this sequence if it's a geometric progression and so by definition of common ratio also we already said that 1 over x is common ratio and that y over 1 is also common ratio all right because this is a term and this is the preceding term so that means this must be equal to y over 1 and if we cross multiply we are going to have that x times y is simply equal to 1 and that's the solution and the other way to do this is also find the value of y just since we already know x and we know 1 and we know the common ratio just add the common ratio sorry multiply 1 by the common ratio so you will get y and if you do that since our common ratio is 3 over 4 so that means if you multiply 1 by 3 over 4 you should get this and if you multiply this by this x both of them are reciprocals and so you should definitely get one and so that's where we're going to end it for this video on the sum of n terms of a geometric progression and um, please kindly subscribe to our youtube channel like share comment on our youtube videos we'll see you in our next video bye